very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. And welcome to this very special and very unique football occasion. You know, 25 years ago, when I was still running around in short pants, and so were many of you, in actual fact, <laughs> a young cub reporter decided to make a fly on the changing room wall documentary about the day-to-day -day running of a professional football club. The club he chose was third division Bostock Stanley. Unglamorous, unremarkable maybe, but he stumbled across one of the most romantic tales in the history of the beautiful game. That young reporter's name was Jerry Tudor. We're very fortunate in having Jerry along here tonight as our special guest. And we're also very pleased to welcome Bostock Stanley's manager from all those seasons ago, Mr. Bertie Masson. <laughs> we're going to show you now Jerry's 1974, if you will, sockumentary. <laughs> <laughs> so without any more further ado, let's go back to the 1973-74 season. Watergate and power cuts, kipper ties and flared trousers. <laughs> if Britain were a giant cheese, then the largely insignificant town of Bostock would be somewhere near the middle of it. Bostock Stanley Association Football Club was founded at the turn of the century by workers from the town's long since defunct carpet factory. Hence the club's arcane nickname, the Underfelt Men. These early players were given pots of locally made carpet glue as win bonuses in order to avoid tax. Last season, with Stanley hovering just above the Division Three relegation zone, manager Ron Rufus was sacked. During the summer, chairman Arthur Swarbrick had the opportunity to go for a high-profile, charismatic, interesting managerial appointment, a Brian Clough, a Malcolm Allison, a Tommy Doherty. Instead, he opted for much-travelled journeyman Bertie Masson. Yes, all right, all right, a bit, a bit of attention now, lads, if you please. Uh, this is your new manager, Mr Bertie Masson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, good morning. Uh, right, I haven't got much to say to you just now. Uh, I'd like to do my talking out on the training pitch. Now then, I don't know what you've been used to uh, with your previous manager, but uh, you call me boss, OK? Boss. Or gaffer. I'm not bothered which. Or chief. Uh, or Mr. Masson, and in certain circumstances, sir. You got that? Yes, well, it's what I like to call respect. You see, so boss, okay? Boss. Or Colonel, uh, call me that one of the other clubs. But not Bertie Big Bollocks. Call me that, that's a fine, okay? If you were to compare football managers to great leaders in history, then Alf Ramsey would be Winston Churchill, Bill Shankly might be Robert the Bruce while Bertie Masson would be one of the other ones who never won anything. Now, if Bob Phillips is staying on as the coach, anything you want to say, Bob? I'll be staying on as coach. Yes, boss. Thanks, boss. <clears throat> now, then, a few simple rules. When you come to work here in the morning at Stanley Park, you will wear a collar and a tie. And the collar should have a shirt attached to it. A shirt with a collar and a tie. No tie, that's a fine. Um, a jacket. I'm not bothered what sort, uh, sports jacket, uh, safari jacket, uh, a leather jacket, that's okay, as long as it's a nice, smart leather jacket. But when you come to work in the morning here at Stanley Park, you will wear a jacket, a shirt, a collar and a tie, or else that's a fine. What about trousers, boss? Um, well, boss, um, on behalf of all the players here, you know, I'd just like to say welcome to, uh, to Bostock Stanley Football Club. Who are you? Um, I'm Alan Hardy. Midfield virtuoso and uh, team captain. Uh, not anymore, you're not. Sit down, son. <laughs> Mika! Now then, this is Mick Wallace. He was with me at Notts County, Blackpool, and all the shot, and now here. I signed him this morning. He's a new team captain. Bertie Masson has just a few short days in which to get to know his players before the new season begins. Hey, you! World block! Tommy! Tommy! Pass the ball! Pass the ball! 
players like Clive Kennard, the first team goalkeeper, who is studying part time at the local college. Geometry is my favourite. I particularly enjoy working out angles and then narrowing them. But of course, the rest of the lads take the piss out of me, calling me Bamba and that. But, but I don't mind. Bamba, 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 Bamba. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ian Wagg, nicknamed Scally, a Liverpudlian, and the self-styled Joker in the pack. Because you know, Scouts, we've got a natural sense of humour, you know, and we don't. We have. Right, well. And thanks. timing. What? Uh, timing. Fullbacks Tommy Bennett, the one Bostock player with some experience at the highest level. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I started at West Brom and uh, their ground is the uh, highest in the country uh, at above sea level. And George Best. Not the George Best, of course, but a different one. It's quite funny, actually, yeah, having the same name as... Uh, what was his name? George Best. <laughs> right you are, yeah. George Best, that's the fella. <laughs> Yay! Centre halves are the twin brothers Ronnie Kay and Reggie Kay. New skipper Mick Wallace has one of the worst disciplinary records in the league. He has to quickly forge a midfield partnership with resident playmaker Alan Hardy. And quickly. Um, if I was the, uh, the manager, I'd be uh, building this team around Alan Hardy. You know, focusing on Alan Hardy and playing to the strengths of Alan Hardy. Uh, I think that's the way to get the best out of Alan Hardy. <laughs> Winger Norman Lewis has gloried in the nickname Shoes, ever since he turned up for training once in a new pair of shoes. Rocket Roger Hartley is an old-fashioned English centre-forward. Born and raised in Kilmarnock, he occupies his spare time writing poetry. Strike partner Mark Bull is married to Denise, one of the red-headed all-girl singing trio Sweet Ginger Sensation. I think Mark finds it quite difficult because I'm so much more famous than him and there have been incidences when supporters have gone up to him to ask for my autograph, I mean, which is fine, but it's when they particularly ask him not to sign their books himself. I mean, we well, can see if you're a slightly unbalanced person or a violent person, you know, you might take this badly. And that's the sort of person Mark is. So I want us to concentrate on playing at second floor, right? Get it up there, over the top, for the forwards to run onto. Then we can play at ground floor, that's fine. But if we're in midfield or at the back, we'll play at second floor. What about playing at first floor, boss? What have I just said? We don't play at first floor, we'll play at second floor. Unless we're in there third, then we can play at ground floor. Yeah, but what is first floor? What? Well, if second floor's up there, yeah? <laughs> like ground floor's on ground. Yeah, then first floor's like what? Being hit in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> it's taking it down in your chest, controlling it. Oh, well, then then d does it go down in the lift to the ground floor? Is there a mezzanine? A mezzanine? <laughs> it's like an extra special floor between the ground floor and the first floor. <laughs> yeah, Italian. Yeah, you vent us play on the mezzanine, apparently. <laughs> mezzanine A, Ovaltine A, what the hell? Yeah. Listen, listen, it's very, very, very simple. Get it up to the second floor, that's all I'm asking. That's all I want. Second floor. Second floor. <laughs> What's ground floor again? <laughs> A few more stationary. I'm free. This is what I like to call me sanctuary. I come here to get away from the job. Away from football altogether. I mean, the other nice thing is, is that when I'm at work, I have to be the gaffer. But when I get home, it's a completely different story. Isn't that right, Pat? That's right, love. Ah, oh, what have I told you about wearing outdoor shoes indoors? Sorry? Mm -hmm. 